Hello viewers, today's topic is on the series of solid waste management. In this lecture, we are going to see the types of solid waste and its generation rate, domestic waste or household waste or municipal waste, biomedical waste or hospital waste, hazardous wastes or industrial waste, agricultural waste, disposal methods of solid waste and landfilling. So let's begin. Welcome to the session on introduction to waste. We humans depend on many things from our environment to satisfy our various needs. And in the process of our development, we generate or produce lot of things which are actually of no use to us and we simply discard them. We often buy packet foods, bottled drinks, canned food, etc. But what exactly we do after having it? We throw away the wrapper or the bottles, right? And what about the leftover food or vegetables from the kitchen? Yes, even that goes into our dustbin. We discard lot of things like the old newspaper, plastic and cardboard wrappings, broken objects and the list just continues. We discard or throw away such things because they can no longer be of any use to us or they might be unwanted, defective, old or worthless. And such objects which are no longer of any use to us are called waste. This waste can be as small as a used pen to as large as an old vehicle. Also, Waste to one person may not necessarily be waste to another. We normally get rid of the waste generated at homes by keeping our bins outside the house, right? But is that the end of it? No. These wastes undergo series of processes right from its collection, segregation, transportation, some wastes are even treated and then finally are disposed of. So let's see the various places of its origin from where the waste can be collected. Let's begin with the waste generated in our house during the various day-to-day -day activities which is the domestic waste. The next one is industrial waste this includes all the various waste generated during different industrial processes. The next one is clinical or biomedical waste. This mainly includes the waste from the hospitals, nursing homes, pathological laboratories, medical clinics, etc. Agricultural activities which generate different waste products. Animal waste this includes animal waste products associated with agriculture and also the waste from slaughterhouses. Nuclear waste. The waste products of the nuclear power plants includes radioactive minerals and metals. Utmost care has to be taken for this type of waste. Mineral waste. It includes heavy metal residues found around mines like lead, arsenic, cadmium, etc. These metal particles pollute the surrounding air and water. Well friends, here we are done with collecting waste from all the various places of its origin. The next we have to do is segregate them or say separate them. But how will we be doing that? Well, there are certain ways by which we can classify the waste. Let's look at them one by one. According to the kind or form of waste generated, we classify waste into three categories. The solid waste can be easily seen. It is generated from different types of activities like construction, industries, mining, domestic use, etc. The wastewater from our homes 
and the liquid chemical effluents from various industries are liquid waste. Can you all guess any type of gaseous waste? Gaseous waste includes poisonous gases from various industries. On the basis of amount of moisture present in the waste, it is of two types, wet waste and dry waste. You might have all seen those plastic containers which are mostly kept alongside the pavements, right? Another way of classification of waste is according to their effect on human health and environment. Hazardous from the name itself, we know hazard means some kind of danger or risk, right? Hazardous wastes are those wastes that could be toxic and harmful to humans, animals and plants as well. These wastes may catch fire very easily. They are very reactive, corrosive and even explosive. These wastes can be from hospital, industrial or even domestic in origin. Whereas the non-hazardous waste are the ones which does not have any harmful effect on our environment or life on earth. According to their properties, waste can be classified as biodegradable and non-biodegradable. Waste that are organic, the one which can be easily broken down by the action of microorganisms over the time, are called biodegradable waste. Whereas the non-degradable waste are the ones which cannot be broken down by microorganisms and will remain on the earth for years until we properly manage them. So friends, here we saw the various ways by which we can classify the waste. But wait a second, in which category of waste will this old television set fall under? Old television set and similar products like computers, VCRs, stereos, fax machines etc. fall under a special category of waste called e-waste or waste, electronic or electrical equipment. It is the name given for electronic products nearing the end of their useful lives. After knowing all these, aren't you guys wondering why we need to study or know about things which are just waste for us? This is because when left uncared, these wastes accumulate and cause serious health hazards. And we all know plastic degrades very slowly, which is why it is such a big problem. Moreover, many aquatic animals like whales, seal, turtles die every year from plastic bag litters as they often mistake plastic bags for their food. Similarly, Many terrestrial animals like cows, dogs and even many birds eat plastic from the dumping sites and ultimately leading to their death. Apart from causing these health hazards, they even add to different types of pollution like air, water, soil etc. First of all, we are going to see the types of solid waste and its generation rate. Solid waste can be classified into the following categories domestic waste or household waste or municipal waste. The Municipal Solid Waste Management and Handling Rules 2000 prescribed under the Environmental Protection Act 1986 by the Government of India define municipal waste as commercial and residential waste generated in a municipal or notified areas in either solid or semi-solid form excluding industrial hazardous wastes but including treated biomedical wastes. Municipal solid waste include the decomposable waste from household products during the preparation of meat, food, vegetable and waste generated from shops, hotels, offices and other commercial units. 
with rising urbanization and change in lifestyle and food habits. The amount of municipal solid waste has been increasing rapidly and its composition changing. The characteristic of municipal solid waste collected from any area depend on a number of factors such as food habits, cultural traditions of inhabitants, lifestyles, climate, etc. Total quantity of solid waste generated in urban areas of the country is about 1.15 lakh tons per day. Out of this, 19,643 tons of waste is generated in metro cities per day. More than 25% of the municipal solid waste is not collected at all. 70% of Indian cities lack adequate capacity to transport it and there are no sanitary landfills to dispose of the waste. The existing landfills are neither well equipped nor well managed. Also, they have failed to protect against contamination of soil and groundwater. Looking at biomedical waste or hospital waste now. Hospital waste includes pathological, anatomical, infectious and hazardous wastes which are produced from healthcare facilities and medical labs. It is generated during the diagnosis, treatment or immunization of human beings or animals and in research activities in these fields. It may include wastes like anatomical waste, discarded medicines, chemical wastes, decomposable syringes, glucose bottles, bandages, body fluids, human excreta, etc. This waste is highly infectious and can be a serious threat to human health if not managed in a scientific manner. The quantum of waste that is generated in India is huge. Looking at hazardous waste or industrial waste now. Industrial operations lead to considerable generation of hazardous waste and in a rapidly industrializing country such as India, the contribution of hazardous waste from industries is largest. Sources of hazardous waste include those from industrial processes, mining, extraction, from pesticide-based agricultural practices, etc. They are corrosive, highly inflammable and explosive. Looking at the agricultural waste now. Agricultural waste is composed up of organic wastes, that is animal excreta, in the form of slurries and farmyard manures, spent mushroom compost, soil water and silage effluent, and wastes such as plastic scrap machinery, fencing, pesticides, waste oils and veterinary medicines. There are a number of potential environmental impacts associated with agricultural waste if it is not properly managed runoff of nutrients to surface waters which can cause over enrichment of water body. Leaking and improper storage of agricultural waste can also pose serious threats to surface waters. In addition, farming activities can give rise to emissions of ammonia and methane which can cause acidification and contribute to greenhouse gases emission. Looking at radioactive waste now, these mainly arise from nuclear power plants, nuclear testing labs, industrial establishments, etc. According to the World Watch Institute, there are more than 80,000 tons of irradiated fuel and hundreds of thousands of tons of other radioactive wastes accumulated so far from commercial generation of electricity from nuclear power. Irradiated fuel can take hundreds of thousands of years to decay into harmless substance. Until then, it is extremely dangerous and must be kept far away from possible human contact. Looking at the composition of solid waste, there has been little documentation of the quantity and composition of solid waste generated in different areas of India and this has limited the capacity to develop effective solid waste management. Studies on solid waste generally consider the city as a single entity and fail to take into account either the variations in waste generation from one zone to another or change over the year. Various case studies consider both of these factors and provides a stronger information base. To plan the equipment required for the collection and transport of waste, make decisions on possibilities of waste reduction through sorting and recycling and disposal methods enact appropriate bylaws to prevent the generation of a waste components, target environmental education and establish current and future needs of solid waste disposal sites. 
The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, that is EPA, uses two methods to categorize the 254.1 million tons of the municipal solid waste generated in 2007. The first is by material, that is paper and paperboard, yard trimmings, food scraps, plastics, metals, glass, wood, rubber, leather and textiles and others. And the second is by several major product categories. The product-based categories are containers and packaging, non-durable goods, example newspapers, durable goods, example appliances, food scraps and other materials. The composition and the quantity of municipal solid waste generated form the basis on which the management systems need to be planned, designed and operated. In India, the municipal solid waste differs greatly with regard to the composition and hazardous nature when compared to the solid waste in the western countries. The solid waste contains large organic fraction that is 30 to 40 percent, ash and fine earth is 30 to 40 percent, paper 3 to 6 percent, along with plastic, glass and metal each less than 1 percent. Calorific value of refuse ranges between 800 to 1000 kilocal per kg and the ratio ranges between 20 to 30. Presently, National Environmental Engineering and Research Institute has again been retained by Central Pollution Control Board, CPCB, New Delhi, in quantification and characterization of solid waste in Metro Class 1 and Class 2 cities and towns to know the actual quantities as well as characteristics of solid waste in designing solid waste management systems. Proper characterization of solid waste is fundamental activity for the planning of municipal solid waste management services. A detailed characterization or analysis is essential for integrated solid waste management strategies to be successful. The amount and kind of solid waste that is produced and the behavior of the generator must be considered. Looking at the disposal methods of solid waste. It is often desirable to use an integrated approach to solid waste management that includes components of recycling, composting, incineration and landfilling. All of these are often proposed as the solution, but composting and incinerization leave substantial amounts of waste that must be landfilled. By far, the most common method of disposal is landfilling, as it is apparently the cheapest and the easiest. Looking at landfilling first, a number of essential factors are considered in locating landfilling sites. Such factors include both physical and social environments. There are six factors, topography, climate, hydrology, cover material that is land cover, geology and land uses. Due to data constraints, we use topography and hydrology cover material existing housing and land development of the areas as guides. The criteria were specified to assume that the dump site would be outside the buffer zone of the hydrology, forested areas, roads and existing houses. These criteria were 300 meters away from the main road, areas less than or equal to 230 square meters based on the contour map, minimal noise contamination from truck movement, 300 meters away from water bodies, located in area not crossed by major roads not located in areas of active agricultural land or near land under development, 40 kilometers away from the nearest population centers in India. Recently, solid waste management systems are assuming larger dimensions in keeping with the municipal solid wastes. Many of the municipalities are taking appropriate action to improve various component systems like collection of solid waste from generation areas, its transportation to processing and disposal sites, utilizing the recycling potential of municipal solid waste and ultimately disposing of by landfilling. Site selection for landfilling. In areas falling under jurisdiction of developmental authorities shall be the responsibility of such development authorities to identify the landfilling sites and hand over the sites to the concerned municipal authority for development, operation and maintenance. Elsewhere, this responsibility shall lie with the concerned municipal authority. Selection of landfill sites shall be based on examination of environmental issues. The Department of Urban Development of the State or the Union Territory shall coordinate with the concerned organizations for obtaining the necessary approvals and clearances. Number three, 
the landfill site shall be planned and designed with proper documentation of a phased construction plan as well as a closure plan. Number 4. The landfill sites shall be selected to make use of nearby waste processing facilities. Otherwise, wastes processing facility shall be planned as an integral part of the landfill site. 5. The existing landfill sites which continue to be used for more than 5 years shall be improved in accordance with the specifications given in the schedule. 6. Biomedical waste shall be disposed of in accordance with the Biomedical Waste Management and Handling Rules 1998 and hazardous waste shall be managed in accordance with the Hazardous Waste Management and Handling Rules 1989 as amended from time to time. 7. The landfill sites shall be large enough to last for 20 to 25 years. 8. The landfill site shall be away from habitation clusters forest areas, water bodies, monuments, national parks, wetlands and places of important cultural and historical or religious interest. 9. A buffer zone of no development shall be maintained around landfill site and shall be incorporated in the town planning department's land use plans. 10. Landfill site shall be away from the airport including airbase. Necessary approval of airport or airbase authorities prior to the setting up of the landfill site shall be obtained in cases where the site is to be located within 20 kilometers of an airport or airbase. Facilities at the site Landfill site shall be fenced or hedged and provided with proper gate to monitor incoming vehicles or other modes of transportation. 12. The landfill site shall be well protected to prevent entry of unauthorized persons and stray animals. 13. Approach and other internal roads for free movement of vehicles and other machinery shall exist at the landfill site. 14. The landfill site shall have waste inspection facility to monitor waste brought in for landfill, office facility for record keeping and shelter for keeping equipment and machinery including pollution monitoring equipments. 15. Utilities such as drinking water, preferably bathing facilities for workers and lighting arrangement for easy landfill operations when carried out in night hours shall be provided. 16. Safety provisions including health inspections of workers at landfill site shall be periodically made. Landfill is the most commonly employed for municipal solid waste disposal worldwide. Landfill can be in the form of an uncontrolled open dump or of a full containment site engineered to protect the aquatic environment. Unlike engineered landfills, open dumps do not have bottom liners to prevent the seepage of leachate or top cover to retain moisture within the fill. Nor do these traditional landfills have a top cover or other preventive measures to reduce methane emission into the atmosphere. Methane and carbon dioxide are principal gases produced from the decomposition of organic fraction of solid waste in the landfill. Methane gas has a 21-fold global warming potential as compared to carbon dioxide. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, such emissions contribute to 18% of the total methane emissions to the atmosphere, ranging from 9 to 70 megatons annually. Therefore, landfills have been implicated as the largest source of atmospheric methane in the world, leading to a natural phenomenon called global warming. Among Asian countries, only few countries such as Singapore, Thailand, Korea and Japan have been following much more advanced municipal solid waste management practices for more than two decades. All these countries use incineration plants to get rid of the municipal solid waste. So viewers, in today's topic on solid waste management in India and population, we have learnt about the types of solid waste, its generation rate, domestic waste or household or municipal waste, biomedical or hospital waste, hazardous or industrial waste, agricultural waste, disposal methods of solid waste and land filling. Thanks for watching the program. Mm -hmm.